Hello Amiga fans, today we're going to be repairing a compact flash memory card in WinUAE to work on an Amiga 600. To begin with, we need to clear the compact flash card of any partitions. To do this, we need to load the command prompt by clicking on the start bar and begin typing command, and click on command prompt. Now type disk part and hit enter. Once disk part is loaded, type list disk which will list all of the storage media attached to the system. On my system, the compact flash drive shows as disk 2 with a capacity of 977 megabytes. To select the disk, type select disk 2. Now we can clean the disk of all partitions by typing clean and hitting enter. Once the compact flash card has been cleaned, we will be ready to prepare it to run on our Amiga 600. First go to Aminet and download a file called pfs3aio.lha. This is an open source version of the professional file system 3 which is more versatile than the standard file system that the Amiga would normally be using. Once you have downloaded the PFS3 file system, we can then set up WinUAE for an Amiga 600. Be aware that you will need to load WinUAE as an administrator. Under the CPU and FPU settings, set the CPU as a 6840 CPU and enable JIT. JIT significantly increases the speed of the CPU emulation and requires a 6820 or higher CPU. Under the chipset settings, set to full ECS as we are emulating an Amiga 600, and under the ROM settings, I'm using the Kickstart ROM version 2.05. This is the same ROM installed on my Amiga 600. Under the RAM settings, I will be using 2 MB of chip memory, 8 MB of Z2 fast memory, and 64 MB of Z3 fast memory, and this will increase the speed of the emulated Amiga for the installation of games and any programs that we may need to be tested. Under the floppy disk selection, I will be using Workbench version 2.1 and requires 4 disks to be mounted. Set the floppy emulation speed to turbo. So, to set up hard disk, you click add hard drive and it should either show up as UKN for unknown or in my case it shows as a question mark. Select the drive and make sure that it is set as a UAE disk and then click add hard drive. Once the hard drive has been added to the list, click properties. I had issues getting my compact flash card to be recognised and I needed to enable RDB mode and at the moment it is unselectable so the way to enable it is to click on the three dots next to the path and it will bring up a box to select a hard drive image file and you just cancel that and now our RDB mode should then be selectable. Click on RDB mode and then click OK. In my case I had to enable RDB mode for my compact flash card to be recognised once it had been partitioned in Workbench. Prior to this, it was just simply not showing up in Workbench as a non-DOS disk. I spent many hours trying to fathom what was going on and discovered that by simply enabling RDB mode, both partitions shown up in Workbench as non-DOS disks. This may not be the case for all compact flashcards, but it certainly was in my case with my Western Digital Silicon Drive 2. Enabling RDB mode enables rigid disk block mode, and this stores the partition and file system information in a special block on the disk which is similar to how the master boot record works on PCs. To set up PFS3 file system, select the plain file or archive for this, enter the name F and the volume label as pfs3aio.lha and locate where you downloaded the pfs3aio.lha file and click OK. This will now mount the LHA file into Workbench. That is the compact flash drive all prepared in WinUAE and the PFS3 file system so now we can load the emulated Amiga. When Workbench is loaded, go into the install 2.1 disk, into HD Tools and then double click HD Toolbox. You may get a message saying that the drives have been added or removed from the system. Just click continue. Click change drive type, select the USB card reader from the list and click define new drive type. Then click read configuration from drive and we get a message saying that it will read the data from the drive. Click continue and then click OK. Select the USB card reader again and click OK, and then click Save Changes to the Drive. Now we are ready to partition our drive. Click on Partition Drive, and as you can see, I have two partitions of 488 megabytes. Change the partition device name from FDH0 label to DH0, and the same with the second partition to DH1. Now click on the Advanced Options tab and go to Add slash Update File System, so we can add the PFS3 file system. Click add new file system and change the file name of the file system to f colon pfs3 aio. Change the DOS type for the file system to 0x504 
65303 and the version of the file system to 19 and click OK. Then click OK again. Now we need to change the file system for the petition. Click custom file system and change the identifier to 0x5046503 and change the max transfer to 0x1fe00 and then click OK. Make sure you have done this with both petitions and then click save changes to the drive. It may ask you to reboot the system so click continue and when the system reboots you should have both your drives showing in Workbench. Then they'll just need formatting and given a name. Once you've formatted both petitions we can install Workbench by going into the install 2.1 disk Go into the install folder and double click English and then proceed with the install. I have selected intermediate user and just follow the on screen steps. Once Workbench is installed, we can restart the system, hold down both mouse buttons and you should see all the drives showing. Select DH0 and it should boot straight into Workbench without any problems at all. Now we can install the flashcard into the Amiga and boot straight into Workbench without the need for floppy disks. And that's it my friends, that is the process complete. I hope this helps anyone who has had any similar issues. Thanks for watching and join me in the next video where I will explore WHD load and install some games directly to the compact flashcard.